we have a couple of items uh, to mention to you. Uh, the uh, transportation department has had a bus over at uh, Walmart for a few days, and we've called it Stuff the Bus. So this is their initiative, and uh, what has happened with that bus, you see them uh, loading some supplies on there. Those are supplies for school children, and uh, we appreciate this community for helping support that. Um, I was hoping for some number information about the amount of supplies that we have. Uh, Mr. Elrod, do you have that information? I don't. There were 13 large boxes we were using the lift to load them up with, but this is paper, pencils, backpacks, just any all types of school supplies. I remember you see Kelly Whitmire there in that picture on the left closest to the door, and she's our uh, representative who works with uh, our homeless children, and uh, she does such an outstanding job for us. Ms. Huskins put her in touch with a, a mother last week who needed some uh, school supplies, and she certainly uh, filled that bill for those parents. And so thanks, Kelly, for what you do for us. And Mr. Elrod, thank you so much for what you do for our children. Appreciate you. Also, uh, the Rodeo Club of uh, Barto has donated uh, $200 for this fund as well. They did that through their collections at each meeting. Uh, such an honor, again, to serve in this community, particularly with the Rotary Club, who uh, gives untiringly to the community. Uh, I was there uh, two weeks ago, and there were some students um, in the city, some young children who had some vision issues. And uh, one of the members uh, asked that we think about them as we gave uh, during that meeting because they needed some Kindles. They needed three. And the price of those Kindles uh, you know, were $150 a piece, and the Rotary Club ended up giving $900 that day for that primary school in Carsville to buy some Kindles. So that's the uh, strength of our community organizations, Mr. Chairman. That's the superintendent's report this evening. Thank you. And along that line, I want to mention, too, that Dr. Harper, you and the school district sent a truckload of school materials and supplies. Dr. Williams helped put that together uh, to one of the schools out west that was devastated by the tornadoes, lost the total school, everything they had. And, and the report back when that truck arrived was just sheer joy because it was all items that normally people wouldn't have thought of uh, donating to help a school go. So it, it was stuff that we no longer used, but it was very useful to them. And I appreciate the school district being a part of that. Yes, sir. Uh, do we have uh, any other comments from board members? Uh, public participation, Dr. Harper? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, one individual who wants to address the board this evening. That's uh, Mrs. Scott. Ms. Scott. Thank you. Thank you. I'd hope with the vote tonight on the calendar changes, there have been more people signed up, but. Um, I'm hoping that y'all will vote no. I know I've contacted a few of y'all on it for my personal thoughts on it. Um, but the students, mostly the students, have proven that they can function and succeed on a 175-day school year with the extended daily times. Um, that in and of itself is commendable. Um, parents and teachers have already made plans for these days that were added to, to furlough days in, in June, um, whether it's scheduling surgeries, planning vacations that they've already put deposits on, or doctor's appointments or anything else that they take advantage of a school day off for. Um, and of course, lastly, just the financial aspect of it. That money can be set back to um, offset what we're already overspending out of the base budget. So that's my comments on the calendar issue. Um, next, I want to talk about the special education system it, within our system. I was disgusted seeing the school system was blatantly breaking the law in regards to its special education students here at the start of the school year. Uh, you should be ashamed for the discrimination that occurs within the schools and the fact that you're not servicing and enabling this subgroup of students to strive to be all that they can be, just as their non-disabled peers are. In the high school, with their higher rigor classes and your refusal to provide full inclusion levels of servicing support, you're essentially keeping them from being college and career ready as their non-disabled peers. Furthermore, uh, to get a HOPE scholarship, there are now rigor requirements in place that the students have to pass higher rigor classes to be able to get the HOPE scholarship. So for some of these high-functioning special education students, you are also disabling them from getting HOPE scholarships when they graduate from high school. Uh, just because a child has a disability, it does not mean that they cannot function highly, yet still need classroom servicing. Just, just because in the case of high school science classes, 
there's no more EOCTs and therefore no more accountability for the higher science classes, it doesn't mean the student's disability goes away and that they don't need the servicing as it's documented in their individual education plan. As I was told Friday, and I quote, the school system wants to try them in higher classes as a transition to college to see if they can function. Hello? The school system is not part of my child's IEP team. They do not make decisions for the education of my child and what special education services they are to get. Dr. Harper, I want to know what part of IDEA or the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act gives the school system the right to change the level of servicing you're going to provide for special education students. You've chosen to begin the school year out of compliance with many, many students, not just my own, and their special ed servicing that they have legal rights to. Last May, you acknowledged my daughter for her accomplishments, accomplishments with the CTAE uh, healthcare pathway and taking first place at the Georgia State HOSA conference. Now this year, you don't want to support her special ed needs in a chemistry class to have her be college ready as her peers and ultimately pursue a, a job in the healthcare. What kind of double standard is that? I know I'm only one parent of many in the special education population, but you'll be hard pressed to find somebody as passionate as I am to advocate for my children's needs. Um, all of your illegal activities have not gone unnoticed, and it's high time that you start treating the special education students with respect and expect them to achieve their goals and reach their potentials just as any other students in the system. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? No, sir. It's time we move to the approval of the minutes. You have before you the July 22nd, 2013 work session minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. It's 5 0. You have the July 22nd, 2013 business meeting minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes before you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. It's 5 0. We'll move now to approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. It's 5 0. Now we'll move to the consent agenda, and I understand that we'd like some items to be moved over to vote separate. Mr. Yes, Schultz. 14 and 15, please. Can you make that informal? Motion? Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we pull items 14 and 15 to be voted on separately. Okay. You've heard the motion. Is there a second? Actually, Thank you, Mr. Bibb. All right, so now you have before you the consent agenda items 1 through 13. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve those consent agenda items. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. It's 5 0. We we'll now move to item 14 approval uh, to convert payroll system to payroll cards rather than paychecks. Dr. Helton. Uh, <coughs> Chairman and board members, I'd like a uh, representative from the bank to uh, come forward. I think we had some questions at our Monday night's meeting, and uh, I think the board members still have some of those questions. That, might get to be answered. Mr. Hooper, thanks for having a representative here. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we are entertaining questions from board members. Yeah, I just have a, I guess specifically, I was the one that had concerns. I know um, there was an article, I believe it was in um, Time Magazine, but there's been some concern, I know, with these cards about their uh, effects on particularly those those workers who are non-banked, and I know that's kind of who's targeted specifically with these cards, but at the same time, I know there are <coughs> penalties associated with these cards too, so I'm just trying to get a better sense of what the fee structure is. I know obviously you guys aren't doing this out of your benevolence, uh, and you guys have to make some money on it, but I just want to make sure we're not putting these folks in a bad situation. Thank you for your concerns and the opportunity to be here and address those. Uh, I, I can answer all of your concerns in regard to that. Uh, fees. Um, Dr. Harper did forward the article, forwarded an article to my colleagues at DBT, who forwarded it to me. Uh, I can go through and address those if you like. 
just in general comments on fees, if, whatever your preference is. Well, just, but, I know there may be some differences with that particular bank as to how you guys operate. I guess just if yes. you can tailor specifically to y'all's fees, that would be perfect. Certainly. Uh, BB&T's approach is a bit different than some of the other large banks in regard to payroll cards. That is an in-house product for us. A lot of the other larger banks farm that out to a third party program manager to handle that. We have not done that with our card. We have a vested interest in both the school board and its employees because those card carrying employees would be BBNT employees, or not employees, but card holders. So they would be BBNT clients as well. So we have a vested interest to keep both parties happy. Um, the article itself, one of the, the main keys there was addressed payroll, or excuse me, prepaid cards. Now while payroll cards are a subset of prepaid, what a lot of people think of when you think of prepaid cards are the ones that hang on the J hooks at the Walmarts and the grocery stores and the drug stores. Those do tend to be laden with fees, the purchase fees, fees for point of sale when you swipe the card and those sorts of things. Our card is not. <coughs> Excuse me. We are offering unlimited point of sale transactions. Uh, the employees can go get their cash back at any BB&T. They can go into any Visa member bank, not just the BB&T, but any Visa member bank in the country, present that card along with proper identification, and get all of their cash on the card. Uh, there is, we provide two BB&T ATM withdrawals per pay period for free. After that, there is a small fee for that, but there are multiple other ways to get cash. They can get cash back at the grocery store, just as you can with your debit card. It's a fully functioning debit card. The only difference is that it has a limit on it, and that would be the pay in that particular account. Can they overdraw that card? They cannot overdraw the card. There is no negative balance fee. There is no inactivity fee. There is no convenience fee. <laughs> there's, there's not an account closure fee. Okay. Do, would you, do you happen to have the uh, proposal that we have in front of the I don't. I don't. I was just wanted to make sure that, you know, because I guess my other concern is, um, and I know that's what we talked about last week, is just getting a handle on what those fees were. I know, Todd, I think you briefly went through them, but uh, uh, I just want, like I said, my concern is, is that folks who are non-bank, I would say, may have irregular um, banking practices that may put them more at risk for running into multiple ATM transactions or something. So what, what is that fee after two? The fee after two is two dollars. Okay. And can you think of any anything other? I mean, just in the normal course of business, I know it's obviously difficult based on somebody's personal habits. You can't preview that or, or predict that. But are there any other typical fees that you can think of off the top of your head that might be associated with somebody using this card? I mean, is there a fee to get their money? I guess you said there wasn't at the bank. No. What we provided for the Barclays County School District employees is a a, a program where they can use it at point of sale at no charge. There are no uh, inactivity fees, as I said. ATM fees, they get two, two balance inquiries, um, cash advance, the cash advance or over-the-counter cash that you could do with the, any piece of the bank. They get one of those free per pay period. Additional ones are five dollars. That's quite common in the industry. Um, I think a lot of times payroll cards kind of get lumped in with those cards that are associated off the rack, so to speak, and those do tend to be quite laden with fees. Um, a replacement card, but replacement cards, we offer one free replacement card per year for employee. Most places call, uh, charge $15 for that fee, for that service. Gosh, along with that, they also get free bill payment, online bill payment, and access to their account where they can charge BB&T, not charge BB&T, but have BB&T send the payment to the biller on their behalf at no charge. Those are unlimited for the month. If there is a biller that does not take electronic payment, they need to pay their rent payment where they would normally go get a money order. They can simply add that payee to their list on the BB&T online and bb &T will cut a check to that person, mail it free of charge as well. What about opting out if they want to cancel and go into direct depositors if there's a fee associated with that? There is not an account closure fee. So 
they just simply stop using it or let Mr. Hooper's office know that they choose to another method of direct deposit. Todd, do we know, are we anticipating about what percentage of employees may take advantage of this? Have you guys projected that at all, or what do you think? We, we have it, but, but we have right now on our direct deposit, uh, we have about 83% participation. Uh, so that would be, you know, roughly speaking, 17%. One of the things that's happened is, by far and large, a large portion of our paper checks were substitutes. We were no longer able to curve that large of a number of paper checks. So once those employees, as we start this year, included that number, maybe a greater percentage for direct deposit participation, because simply we don't issue as many checks in total. Uh, but until we go through September or October, we really don't know what that percentage would be. Uh, I guess just add one thing to what, what uh, Lee has uh, spoken to is the most important part for us is if you decide that you don't want to, quote, participate in the card and keeping a balance on it, Rather than us giving you a paycheck, this is like just basically getting a card and going to your bank as a member of the visa <coughs> and pulling your cash out right then and getting cash. Uh, so they wouldn't have to keep their own cash on the card. It would allow them to just basically use that plastic, if you will, in the little paper check. Okay. I think that's it. Any other questions? Let me, let me say this. One thing that's a part of what we're talking about that we have not spoken to, each month we have employees that come through our HR department that we do an intake on, those who participate, <coughs> who participate in that, there would be what we call an onboarding for them to explain to them exactly how this process works. And obviously with payroll, uh, we would provide guidance on how they can use that, not to actually mentor them month to month, but when we do do an, when we do an intake for the new we want to take ownership of that to, to avoid any unnecessary terms. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. I just had some concerns about those fees. I just want it to be a positive experience for everybody. I, I think it'll be a, a win-win for both the school board and the employee. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussions in reference to this point? This time I entertain a motion on item 14. So moved. Make a motion to approve. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, if you'll raise your hand. It is 5-0. We now move to item 15, Dr. Harper. Uh, this has been asked to be pulled. It's the um, Barton County Freeport Agreement with Barton County Government. All right. This time I'll entertain a motion on this item. So moved. To approve. Yes, and so second. Second. Any discussion? Um, I just want to kind of say hallelujah. I think that this is one of the most single important things that's where you'll help see growth. I do cautious um, us in the future after this we know there's tremendous growth coming there's no doubt about it and I did make a call to uh, to Steve Taylor because I was curious when that money we would see the revenues to where it would help the system with these projects coming and he referred me to the ACCG and said if they don't help you let him know and it, it is amazing what we're going to see but the first year you're going to see additional sales tax from the construction the next year after they look at the properties or whatever, you'll see increase in value there. So the, the one thing that I want to say, and I hope somebody doesn't mind that I quote them because they're in the room, that you hope for the best but prepare for the worst. Her and her mama said that. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to uh, to say that. So I just, I, we know good times are coming. That They are. We know it. Things have been signed. We're, we're really looking forward to it. But I do cautious us uh, anticipating more spending for the next two years till we get there. Any other discussion? Yeah, I'll just echo what Fred said. I think this is a very important uh, step for us and uh, to kind of step forward in a unified front with the commissioner and to go out to put uh, prospective employers and people want to make capital investments here in Bartow County and say, you know, the welcome mat is open. And one of the things that has hindered us for years is uh, having that bad check mark next to our name for not being 100% free port. And uh, I know for me anyway, it's uh, we still have a couple of difficult years ahead, but we're going to get where we need to be through growth. I mean, we just can't tax our way out of this problem. We've got to get there through growth. And with that growth brings people who want to buy houses and rent houses here and bring their children to our community. And uh, if we can just hang on and, uh, and, and be a place where these businesses want to come and locate, then I think uh, will really do something uh, positive for our community and for our citizens. So I just really appreciate us taking this step. 
Any other discussion? All those in favor, if you raise your hand, please. It is 5-0. We're now 